Hi, I'm Holly Howitt with Beacon Community Connections. And in this time of uncertainty, we recognize that everyone's feeling stress on both their health and their mental health and you may not know what to do about that. So my colleagues and I at the Justice and Health Collaborative, we decided to create some video shorts to help you with some key information to both recognize signs and symptoms of mental distress and also to share some resources in our community to help both you and your family. So thank you for watching this video. Please share this information with others because at Beacon we really do believe we are better together. Hello everyone, my name is Deja Williams. I'm a mental health clinician here in Lafayette at The Family Tree. And I'm here today because of a need that we're recognizing in our local community, but also a need that we're recognizing all over the world. And that's a need to begin a discussion around the topic of our mental health, specifically around the topic of trauma during this COVID pandemic. So as a local and a global community, we've all found ourselves in a situation and in circumstances that we did not foresee. We wanted to dedicate this video today specifically to our frontline workers uh, on this pandemic who probably did not foresee themselves on the front line of the COVID pandemic. So those of you who are working in grocery stores, those of you who um, are also working in other businesses where you find yourself in constant contact with the public. So my objective for today is to help bring a perspective and a framework to some of the thoughts and the emotions and the feelings that you guys might be having which may very well be signs of trauma um, i know that it could be shocking and surprising for you guys to hear me refer to your experience as possibly traumatic usually when we hear the word trauma we tend to think of um, something catastrophic like an accident or a natural disaster or a situation in which our life is threatened in the moment however depending on this circumstance and the person many different things can be considered traumatic so for some person uh, a divorce can be considered traumatic for someone moving to a new town or a new city can be considered traumatic so today I'm hoping to explore a little bit more the concept of trauma with you guys uh, to gain a bit more understanding and get a, a bit more clarity on the things that we're all thinking and experiencing and feeling and hopefully to put some resources in your hands should you find yourself in the need of them So what is trauma? How do we define it, um, this concept that we're going to be talking about today? In the simplest of terms, trauma is an emotional response to a, a distressing and terrible event. So the key factor with understanding trauma is to understand that this is a very unique and a very individual experience. This has a lot to do with how the individual person experiences the event in the moment. So it's a situation when our ability to cope is overwhelmed. Um, it's a situation in which our resources, both our internal and our external resources, are not sufficient to see us through what we're feeling um, and experiencing in the moment. Internal resources can look like um, our emotional health and well-being. It could look like our mental, psychological well, well-being, our spiritual well-being. And our external resources can look like um, our support system, our finances. So when we find ourselves in a situation where these resources are not sufficient, um, we feel a sense of helplessness and a sense of hopelessness about what we're experiencing. These are the situations in which you can see someone begin to have a trauma response. So. Um, an example I can give you guys is uh, if we both were in the same car accident and we both experienced that at the same time, you could leave that situation with a trauma response and I might not based on my unique individual experience of that um, event and based on your unique in, uh, experience of that event. So the trauma response that a person can has can look differently from person to person. So trauma response can look differently depending upon the person. So just as we discussed that when it comes to the experience of trauma, it has a lot to do with the person's unique experience of that event. Um, 
the way a person responds to trauma is going to look differently from person to person. So during the course of this COVID pandemic, you may have noticed that you responded in either one or multiple of the ways that I have listed here. Um, so for instance, you may have noticed that you started out with feelings of intense fear and anxiety when um, the threat of the pandemic happened and maybe now you find yourself in more of a numb state. You may have noticed changes in your eating pattern, your sleeping pattern, shifts in your mood um, you may have even experienced that constant headache that just doesn't seem to go away um, or just a general sense of feeling unwell most of the time. So like you, I also have a job where I have contact with the public. And if you're anything like me, you may have many times found yourself in a state of anxiety about, you know, um, did I wash my hands properly before I touch this or that object? Did I disinfect my workspace properly? You may find yourself many times in a state of anxiety about um, the cleanliness of your home after you returned from work, you know, um, was I able to clean my home properly? You may stress about um, potential exposure, uh, exposure to family that you live with. So the difference really with the COVID pandemic as opposed to other traumatic events is that um, unlike the car accident analogy that I gave you earlier, a car accident happens in a moment and then it's done. With this COVID pandemic, we're, we find ourselves in a, a situation where the trauma is ongoing. So this is something that we have to wake up and deal with every day. Um, and we have to deal with it on top of the other problems and stresses that come with everyday life. So you may be dealing with the stress and the threat of the COVID pandemic and grieving the loss of a loved one. You may be dealing with the stress and threat of the COVID pandemic and grieving um, recent racial injustices that are happening in America. You may be dealing with the threat of the pandemic and you've also lost a job or lost a source of income. So this pandemic has kind of become this awful background noise to a host of other issues that come with life. So when we find ourselves in this experience and when we find that we're in a position where the reality of what we're experiencing is overwhelming, um, our ability to cope a lot of times that you'll see people begin to have a trauma response in these situations. Okay, so what can a trauma response look like? Um, it can look a variety of different ways depending upon the person. So a person can experience nightmares, flashbacks, fear, anxiety, anger, sadness, feeling numb, avoidance, difficulty sleeping, loss of interest, hypervigilance, irritability, changes in appetite, mood swings, and a host of physiological symptoms such as muscle ache, headache, or nausea. So I just wanna take a moment to encourage all of you that if you've been experiencing any of the trauma signs and symptoms that we mentioned in the slide before, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. And there's nothing wrong with the way that you've been experiencing the events that we've all um, had to deal with lately. It is perfectly normal to have intense reactions to an intensely stressful event. So now is not the time for us to be hard on ourselves. Um, now is the time for us to extend ourselves grace and understanding. It's the time for, extent, for us to extend that same understanding to the people around us. I think a lot of us expect ourselves to be performing and functioning uh, in the way that we were pre-pandemic. Uh, and I don't know that that's a very realistic expectation for us to have on ourselves right now. So we wanna extend grace and understanding to ourselves and the people around us. I'll be transparent and share a moment that I had um, around the time when this all first started, I was in my kitchen cleaning like I usually do, and I was sweeping the floor and I just had a moment where I broke down and burst into tears, you know? And that was my experience of helplessness in that moment, feeling like um, no matter how much I cleaned, it wouldn't be enough, feeling like maybe I would miss something, you know? So some of you hearing that may have had similar experiences. Some of you hearing that may have had experiences that were totally different, but I wanna encourage you guys that no matter how uh, you've been experiencing this event, you're not alone in what you're thinking and what you're feeling. Um, we're, we're all feeling it in different ways. I'm feeling it, the people around me are feeling it, your friends and family um, are feeling these things as well. So now, however, now that we have a framework and an understanding in which we can view um, the things that we've been experiencing, 
we have a better understanding of what we can do when we find ourselves in these situations where it's difficult to cope. So now we can look at how do we take care of ourselves in the midst of this ongoing crisis. So now we want to cover some items uh, for our self-care. So some of the things that I'm going to cover are not particularly groundbreaking um, things. It's things that we all know that we should do, but a lot of times we find ourselves not doing them uh, or we're not doing them consistently. When we do consistently put these things into practice, um, we do experience um, an increase in our physical health, our mental health, um, emotional, spiritual health. All of these things help to put us in a better position to cope with the stresses that life will throw at us, especially in the midst of this pandemic. So let's look at some items for physical health. The first one is eat regularly, stay hydrated. So this seems to be something that we know that we need to do every day. However, um, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to coworkers who are working in various fields and they'll tell me they haven't eaten all day. They haven't drink, drank anything all day or they haven't even gone to the bathroom that day. So we wanna remember, especially in the midst of something as stressful as this pandemic, to devote the time to make sure that we're eating properly, eating healthy meals and staying hydrated. Secondly, we want to maintain a good sleep routine. A lot of research supports going to bed and getting up at the same time every day. Um, and that when we sleep for at least seven to eight hours a day, we're going to feel overall just more well rested and a general sense of well being. The next point is exercise. We want to make sure we're exercising for at least 60 minutes a day just to maintain our physical health. And then last for physical health, um, I always advocate for at least one to two hours of sunlight a day. This is great for your physical health, but it's also really good for your mental health as well. Whether that's getting outside and taking a walk, going on your back porch, um, but just making sure you get at least one to two hours of sunlight a day. Okay, so now we wanna look at some items for our mental health. The first item I have here is creating and maintaining a daily routine. So in the midst of this COVID pandemic, one of the things many of us are experiencing is a shift in our sense of normal, normalcy in the routines that we had before. So it's very important for us to be able to create and maintain daily routines for ourselves just to integrate that sense of normalcy back in our day to day lives. Our next point is we want to make sure we're unplugging and limiting media exposure as much as we can or as much as we need to. One of the things I talk to my clients about is um, the concept of staying informed, but also checking in with yourself, checking in with your mind and checking in with your body. Um, it will send you signals whenever you're overloaded with media exposure. So when you find that you're having those experiences, give yourself permission to unplug and, and take some time away from that. Okay, so the next item on our list that we want to look at for maintaining mental health is scheduling regular video and phone check-ins with your loved ones. Um, now, more than ever, it's so important for us to stay connected with our support groups just to be able to share um, experiences um, and have that support in such a stressful time. So we want to make sure we're regularly staying in touch with our loved ones and our friends. The next item we want to look at is a phrase. It's control the controllables. So basically what this means is um, during the course of the pandemic, we may have experienced that there are many things that are outside of our control. When we focus on the things that we can't control, it brings a sense of anxiety. It brings a sense of instability. When we come back and focus on the things that are, are in our control, we feel stable again um, and our anxiety begins to decrease. So throughout this process, I really want you guys to focus on the things that are in your control. And the last item we have for mental health is we definitely want to advocate for you guys to consider therapy or counseling. I always say that you don't have to be experiencing a certain severity of symptoms um, to be able to take advantage of counseling. I think during this time, everybody can benefit from counseling. Anyone can benefit from being able to um, talk to someone and process their unique individual experience of this event. Everyone can benefit from having coping skills and tools put in your hands um, to help you to manage the stress that you may be experiencing during the COVID pandemic. So we definitely want you guys to consider therapy and reach out for that if you find the need. 
So we just wanted to let you guys know about some resources that we have here at the Family Tree. The Family Tree is an education and counseling center that we have here in Lafayette, Louisiana. We are currently offering telecounseling services, online services to the public. Um, it's very easy for you guys to take advantage of these services should you find yourself in need. Up here we have our website where you can log on and schedule your own session with a therapist. You can also call our number and talk to one of our receptionists who will be more than happy to get you scheduled with the clinician of your choice. So another resource we wanted to make you guys aware of is NAMI. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. If you go to www.nami.org, you can have access to their resource library. So NAMI has both in-person and online support groups that you can take advantage of through their resource library, along with a host of other mental health resources. NAMI also has a crisis text line, and if you text NAMI to 741741, you can be put in touch with a crisis counselor should you find yourself in need. So that about sums up our time for today. I want to thank you guys for tuning in with me. And before I leave, I just want to encourage you to extend grace to yourself, extend understanding to those around you, um, and make sure you're taking good care of yourself.